Kyle Albertson is an odd presence on the Syracuse Opera stage. His title character of Sweeney Todd appears short and portly, and his bass baritone is lackluster. Rebecca Cam's dolly was shrill and unintelligible. Nailed it! I'm sorry, but this sounds like a poor man's Stephen Costello. The various supporting roles were strongly taken by Rhine Center singers, apart from Jennifer Jacobs' squeaky fresquita. Besides, Signora Scotto certainly managed to explain to her that a beautiful woman is not entitled to stand on the stage with the grace of a kangaroo, and for this, we are thankful a ward was not given, although in some ways, I feel sorry for her. Chad A. Johnson, the Paulino, listed quite an array of lead roles in his program bio, but his wispy tenor did not seem worthy of any of them. Happily, his role is the least important in the opera, and he may have been suffering from the pollen-ridden atmosphere. Heidi Melton never liked anything I've heard her in. She has a very youthful, bright tone that seems as if it might be suitable as Eva, but I doubt if she could hold the pitch or the line. The role's subsequent leaps to sustained high notes taxed his powers to the limit, and he shied away from holding on. When not pressed by the more dramatic vocal exigencies, Vera was capable of some admirable lyrical singing, but the heavier moments were beyond his grasp. Sarah Gartland looks like the very model of a Micaela, but vocally she's a puzzle. I can't say if the voice is over bright or without a focus or both, but something needs to be fixed there. Yeah, great. The biggest problem with this performance was Louisa Muller's stage direction, which ranged from awkward to abysmal. Most of her fresh ideas were bad ones, and the inept blocking of the bohemian scenes and lazy chorus at the footlights handling of Act Two looked like amateur hour. To Alyssa Anderon, Aces. Last year my wife and I became concerned about your operatic future because we sensed that you were not projecting to the degree needed. Well, you projected very well last Sunday throughout your tessitura and without incurring the harshness in your voice that previously had been omnipresent. We had no concern about your projection or the quality of your voice. Have you addressed that issue this year? Something good seems to have happened. Sincerely, the most appropriate person ever. Baritone Wes Mason as Zurga didn't quite reach the high notes in one place. It sounded to me like an obvious gaffe. To his credit, and with the other performers on stage, no one visibly reacted as if he missed. While a confident woman, and aside from the obvious weight problem, she cannot act and she has no musicianship. Tenor, John Burton, has a voice that immediately invites young Pavarotti gush, but he also has the circumference of the late great Italian. And even if Chavez might wish Burton would join Weight Watchers, it's hard to understand that she dumps the pudgy tenor. The greatest moment, however, in the CCO staging is focused on Jose's famous flower aria, and Burton sings it with the melting warmth of a 300-pound toaster oven. Soprano Rosalind Jones annoyed me as Frisquita in the current production of Carmen, as her voice is incredibly loud. How dare you. However, she wasn't terrible in the Eugene Onegin excerpt. 
When she sings piano, her voice is pretty, but the forte bits can be frightening. <laughs> what? Robert Orth overacted in a self-congratulatory manner. He is a utilitarian baritone suitable for the solo chorus in lyric opera, and unless he is very young, that is where he will remain. As a footnote, I'd like to add that not only did that critic disappear a few years later, so did the newspaper. And I'm still here.